you thought PCG was powerful before, wait until you see what linear grammar can do. Hello everyone. In this episode, we're diving into the linear grammar tool in Unreal Engine 5.7. Personally, I think this tool is extremely useful and can speed up a lot of workflow steps. When you activate the tool and begin drawing on your level, you can sketch out a line just like the Draw Spline tool, and PCG will automatically generate points along it. But the real power appears in the grammar section. Once you enable grammar, you can start defining rules and even replace the default gizmos with your own mesh. For example, let's open the default PCG window setup. As you can see, the symbol is represented with the letter A, and the rule uses a asterisk, meaning PCG will repeat the symbol along the length of the spline. Now let's delete the asterisk, asterisk symbol, to see what happens. Without repetition, PCG places one single mesh, stretched across the entire spline. If your spline is long, the mesh deforms and stretches. If it's short, the deformation is smaller. If you don't want your mesh to stretch, simply disable Scalable. This keeps your mesh at its original size. The next option is Size, but since we haven't enabled repetition yet, it won't affect anything, though you'll see how important it becomes later. Forward Axis lets you rotate your object along different orientations to match the spline direction. And with Local Offset, you can reposition the mesh in any direction. In this case, I'm raising the window mesh on the Z-axis so it sits correctly on the surface. Next, we have the Draw Mode options. Tangent Drag lets you create smooth, straight segments. Click Tangent. Create splines with visual tangent handles for more control. Now, if we add the asterisk, asterisk symbol, back after the A, you'll immediately see how repetition affects the placement and spacing of each mesh along the spline. All right, everyone, now we want to dive deeper into the main topic, grammar. Our first input is the asterisk, asterisk symbol, which repeats the meshes along the entire spline. Now imagine we have a second piece of data and we want its symbol to be set to B. We use a comma. In the current rule, the A points repeat until the second to last one, and at the end, the B symbol is placed. To add it, you can also adjust the position of the B point. If there is any spacing between the meshes, it is related to the mesh size, which you can fix by adjusting it. Let's work more on our rules. For example, we can place meshes every other point or place our inputs in a random pattern. With a bit of imagination, you can imagine that instead of these walls, we have buildings, and in this way, we can replace them and get variation. In the end of the video, we will have an example like this.
Now we want to use blocks. For example, if we place a star after B, it will only repeat B. So here we place both A and B inside a block, and then add a star after it so both will repeat. If we have three or more items inside the block, they will all repeat as a single block. If we want it to repeat a specific number of times, we use a number after it. Now it's time for random choice, which gives weighted randomness to our blocks or symbols. To do this, we use curly braces, then we type our block and assign it a weight using a number. To understand this better, we need to create more inputs. For example, here I assign a tree and a wall to the letters C and D. And after the first number, I create another block and set its weight to 1. As you can see, it places them randomly, but the first block has higher priority because of its weight, and after that the tree and wall appear. If we change the weight of the blocks, their priority changes. I will create another example with three blocks so you can understand the concept even better.
In the end, by giving a higher weight to any block, that block will have higher priority. For example, one block can appear 50% of the time and the other blocks 25% each. Now we want to create a practical project using what we've learned. I've imported six buildings into Unreal, and using the grammar tool we're going to place them along a straight line like city buildings next to each other. Throughout the process, by using commas, asterisks, blocks, and making adjustments to the buildings, we'll reach our desired result.
Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this breakdown of the grammar tool, don't forget to smash that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe for more Unreal Engine tips and PCG deep dives. Your support means the world. See you in the next one.